Okay. We can also use a phrase. And phrase comes, phrases come in many types. We can start with a preposition phrase, like most national monuments. Independence Hall is protected by the National Park Service. I always tell my students to be wary of using pronouns to do too much. Um, they, they want sometimes to use pronouns like with and by to, um, to convey too much meaning and too much use uh, without, without thinking about what they're actually doing. It's got to have, it's always got to have this, this anchor in, in the main clause. This national monument is Independence Hall. In this case, there's a very strong, easy to see link. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times when students write a sentence and don't know what's wrong with it, it's because the preposition phrase isn't linked to the sentence. Mm -hmm. it, it, they're, they're, they're trying to make a preposition phrase do what it can't. And I'll have examples mm -hmm. of, of that later too. This is just a little preview where we're going. Mm -hmm. I, I, I tell my students, you always have to prime the, the, the audience for what's coming next as much mm -hmm. as you can. Okay, so um, next uh, kind of phrase, a noun phrase, a highly visible government agency. The service protects many popular tourist sites. So another kind of subordinate structure. Also um, pointing out to students always that there's got to be a link to the sentence. Um, the agency is the service. It's, it's linked by repeating or uh, using a, a synonym or sometimes even an opposite will do the trick and make the link. Um, okay, another subordinate structure, adjective phrase, uh, well-dressed and well-groomed but very nervous. The young man approached his future father-in-law. I, I, I was running out of of content on the independence <laughs> hall. Uh, I didn't really, couldn't really describe it very well, so I thought, well, this, uh, this will work. Um, again, who is well-dressed? Who is well-groomed? In terms of form, that link has to be there. Um, all, all, all these subordinate structures have to have a, a concrete link to the main clause. Um, this is one, if we have time, we'll discuss more on the form because verbal phrases and absolute phrases are tricky. Uh, but lacking any sort of formal education, he warily entered the library for the first time. Um, in, in this case, it's, it's, um, it's modifying the verb. How did he enter? Um, what condition? Um, it can also be thought of as description of, of the subject. Okay. So, um, and, and usually it's, it's form here that gives the students difficulty and, um, and the use and the meaning. All right, so let's go on. Okay, another kind of structure is an appositive, and we touched on this briefly uh, last we, when we were talking about providing definitions. Um, so uh, again, strong links, the National Park Service, what is it? The service is a branch, okay? Um, and, and always, always reinforcing the fact that it runs Yosemite Park. That's the main idea. What it is, the definition of it is subordinate. Um, my students still make a lot of mistakes um, and reverse these two. Mm -hmm. um, we, the definition is the subordinate structure. The term is the part of the main clause. Um, next. Um, we, we don't tend to think of just single words as, as grammar structures. 
Um, but if we just think of it as a modifying word, what it, what function is it? Is it uh, is it what function is it doing? And how does it function in the sentence? Um, we can see that that even isolated words like and and but that apparently have no form are indeed grammatical. They, they are a subordinate structure. Um, it's not necessary. At Independence Hall Park, rangers give tours and protect the building from vandalism. Okay? It's, it's subordinate. It's not necessary for the main clause. And we can think of it as extra stuff we're adding in. 